Hello everyone, today we're going to be making homemade pasta and homemade tomato sauce for dinner. Um, we're going to be using the stuff uh, that we got from our farmer, the last bit of the tomatoes of the season, and we're going to be making pasta from scratch this evening. So let's get right into it. Okay, so first off we're going to do is we're going to make the pasta. And the recipe we're going to be using only has three ingredients, eggs, flour, and a little bit of olive oil. So first thing you want to do is get about two cups of flour and put into a little pile here. And then you take the bottom of your measuring cup and create this crater. And we make build up the walls. It's very important. Take your three eggs. This recipe calls for three large eggs but uh, we get ours from my dad's chicken, so when you get them from a farmer, the sizing is not consistent, like that. So you might have to make some adjustments to the recipe. Add another egg, or add some more flour, or add more oil to uh, offset the balance. But if you're buying eggs from the grocery store, they're pretty consistent. Okay, now it's in here, you just wanna start whisking, and whisking gently. The eggs themselves will slowly pull the flour away from the walls. You do not want to just simply pull, dump it in yourself or the eggs are gonna go everywhere. I made the mistake a lot of times when I first did it, where I would manually pour the flour in. The trick is just being patient and slowly letting it work its way in while you whisk the eggs. And this takes a minute, but it's worth it. It's a process, but you see the flour slowly working its way in. Now I just use a fork because it's easier, more controlled, and less likely for me to keep bashing the walls of the, uh, of the flour. Just slowly, because it's sinking in, add a little bit, and push up on these walls a little bit. So does it start just to, you said it just takes it from the walls on the side yeah. until it becomes a dough? Yeah, pretty much the uh, the eggs are sticky enough where every time it passes and hits the side of the wall, it takes a little bit of the flour away. Like you can see the divots. Um, okay, I always wondered why people made it a crater. I've read it in a few cooking books, but I haven't yet. I've yet to try it myself. Yeah, because the eggs are too uh, loose and runny, they'll just go everywhere, um, and it's it makes a consistent uh, flow of flour, so you don't get clumps either. Mmm, that's neat. You can already see it's really thickening up. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, I see. Yep, there's the mat on the bottom now. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys can see, we, um, right under the egg there, we uh, use a cooking mat normally on our uh, counter, just so we don't ruin the grout in our tile and get food in it. And so you can see that under there now. Yeah, silicone mats are great when working on your counter. Easy to clean up, non-stick. They're great. One thing you can't do is cut on them. Okay, now it's starting to get pretty thick. We can start adding the flour at a faster rate. You can see it's taking a lot of the flour already and the walls are already crumbling, so. That's it's kinda... cool. This is the part where you start, can start to add your oil. Kind of just want to do a couple tablespoons. Not a lot. And I said earlier, considering we were using eggs from my dad's ch own chickens, if you ever feel like the uh, dough is getting too dry because there's too much flour, feel free just to take some of it away or you can add more egg it's a give and take type thing so you just added some water yeah if it gets too dry you can always add a little bit of water kind of hydrate a little bit don't do, do too much yeah, I only had a few drops of water but it really brought the dough 
back from being super, super flaky and crumbly to actually forming as it should. And if you have a bread machine at home, check the settings because it might have a pasta setting on it. I need to check to see if ours does. But some bread machines do have a pasta setting where you can just simply add all the ingredients and it'll make the dough for you. Skipping this whole process yourself. So now that you're done kneading, you'll have a nice little ball of dough. What, the next step is to let it wrap it in plastic and then let it sit for 30 minutes on your shelf or countertop. This is just step one. So next up we're gonna get working on is the tomato sauce. Okay, now that the uh, pasta dough is sitting, we're gonna get started working on the tomato sauce. Okay, what we're gonna be using is tomatoes that we got from our farmer, some peppers we got from him too, some white onion, garlic, and some more olive oil. I'm gonna start by cutting down these tomatoes. Just gonna cut off all the green parts. And just cut them. And kind of keep them up. Now the peppers, I'm only doing two to just add a little bit of flavor to the pasta and to kind of help us go through them. Now a little bit of white onion for flavor. And the fun part, I'm going to be taking five cloves, so I really, really like garlic. Now, we're just gonna add a heart healthy amount of olive oil to this. Enough to get everything well coated. Give it a stir to make sure everything's clear in that olive oil. Now we move it to the stove. Okay, now we're at the stove. I'm gonna turn to a medium low heat and we're just gonna let it sit for a little bit, stirring it every now and then to make sure it don't burn. I'm gonna put a lid on top, because I want, in the beginning, I want the moisture to circulate to help break it down to make it soft. Then after I throw it through the uh, immersion blender, I'm gonna let it cook down. So this is, the pasta is gonna be the longest part of this process, but it's definitely worth making it from scratch. So I'll see you guys in a little bit once we get this going. We have been having it sit on the stove for a medium low heat for about 30 minutes now. You can see all the, everything started to get soft, break down a little bit. We're gonna probably let this go for another 15 minutes and then we're going to blend it all up. Keeping the lid on so the juice stays in to help break down all the tomatoes. And it smells wonderful. Okay, now that we have this sitting on the stove long enough, we're gonna blend it up with the immersion blender. There we go, that's looking pretty good. We're just gonna scrape around the sides of the spoon to make sure there's no chunks. Looks like I got everything. Now we're gonna let it sit on the stove with the lid off to reduce. So we'll come, let's see back in a little bit with this. Now that we've had our dough been sitting on the counter for a little bit, now it's time to roll it out and make some pasta. I'm gonna flour dust the surface a little bit. And do the same to the rolling pin. Broke off the, the uh, dough into smaller balls to work with. I'm gonna put the first one in the middle and slowly start working its way out. We're rolling this out by hand because we don't have a pasta roll, uh, press or a roller, whatever it's called. Um, if we did, it'll make it a lot easier and get, it'll get the pasta very, very thin, but doing it by hand works just fine as well. Trying to try to get as thin as possible and get to the point where it doesn't seem like it's anything. So what you do is take some flour, 
Just make sure you dust the inside pretty good. Fold it in half and then roll it out that way. It'll get even thinner as opposed to if you were still had out as all one piece. <sighs> oh no, you got the pig. One second, buddy. Daddy's cooking dinner. And you see, because I put the flour in it, the sides did not stick together at all and it got a lot thinner. Now I'm going to take a knife and cut, manually cut into thin pieces. So I'm just going to cut off these excess pieces because I'm not going to get full noodles out of them anyways. I'm just kind of score them down like that. And you carefully score this down a piece at a time. This is the most tedious part, but still get decent sized noodles. And you can make these as thin and thick as you want, wherever you have the patience for. I like my noodles a little on the wider end, kind of like a fettuccine. And there will be imperfections. That's just part of doing my hand. But it just shows you do not need a uh, fancy pasta machine. Okay. You don't want to eat that yet, buddy. Maybe you do. Uh, hey. Damien. No, no, roll that. Good job, buddy. Keep going. Keep going. Are you showing everyone what you can do? Last of the dough rolled out and cut. This is almost Back of what up. we made. Damien commandeered a little bit, one of the balls for himself. So this is about 75% of the dough turned into noodles. So as you see, we got quite a bit. And one trick to get make sure the dough doesn't stick together for the noodles is you just take a little bit of flour, sprinkle it in and kind of work it in. And that way the noodles won't stick to each other uh, while you wait to boil them. So I'm just gonna put this aside, and let's go check on the sauce. Okay, I see we've been having the sauce sit here. It's gotten a little bit thicker, consistency that we want. And we've been keeping it at a low so it doesn't burn, but just enough for it to simmer away. Now this is the part where you, if you wanna add your own seasonings, you can. I'm just gonna add a little bit of oregano. And I'm going to add a little bit of this basil salt. Basil infused salt that my mom gave us last Christmas. I'm just going to pinch it in. Just a little bit more. I'm just going to work that in. And I'm not going to add too much seasoning because we have the garlic and the onion and the pepper in there. So that's going to add a lot of flavor as is. I'm just adding just the oregano and the salt just to kind of round things off a little bit. It's really good. It smells really good. It is good. Okay, so now that it's done, we're going to pour this into its own bowl, clean it out so then we can get boiling the pasta. Alright. Cooking in the kitchen with Damien. He's gonna make a mess of no. Oh, oh, oh. Working hard, buddy? What you making? The answer's a mess. So what we're going to do as a, uh, to make put in with the sauces, we're going to cook. We have some leftover shrimp here that we're going to cook into our cast iron frying pan, and we're going to have some of our dehydrated mushrooms. We're going to cook uh, cook into it as well. So, but first, we're going to start by melting a stick of butter in our cast iron. Mm. Now we wait. Okay. So the butter's. Pretty much completely melted. We got some of our dehydrated mushrooms that we got from the food bank. Um, we dehydrated the cells 
the food bank gave us a ton of them and the best way for us to save them is was to dehydrate them and so we're gonna do this into the butter just pour a good amount in there to help hydrate them and get some good flavor going and i'm just gonna stir them a little bit and you can see they're quickly reconstituting okay once all the mushrooms have a decent coating of the butter i'm gonna take our shrimp and just pour it in there and i'm gonna let those reheat I'm not going to season the shrimp because we did that the other day when we had it for our meal. This is just going to be reheating pretty much and getting the mushrooms cooked in flavor. So now we're going to let that sit for a few minutes and now we're going to boil our pasta. Now that we have our water boiling, we're just going to take a little bit of our pasta and put it in. Now the difference between our your homemade pasta and the stuff you buy from stores, this only needs about a minute in the uh, water before it to cook, as opposed to uh, longer with the dried out pasta. Yeah, the pasta is getting a lot fluffier, as you can see. There we go. Now we just do that a few more times so we go through all of our pasta. You can see when they're cooked they're a little fluffier and not as of the yellow color, they're more of an off-white. And that's kind of what you're looking for. Now that the pasta's done cooking, we also got our sauce done here and our shrimp and mushrooms also right here. Everything we got was either from our farmer or from the food bank. Uh, we didn't have to buy anything, and er like I said, we made everything 100% from scratch. Noth nothing pre-made for this recipe. Thank you so much for stopping by. All right. Now, test from the wife. Dang, ah. Okay. Oh, come on. Mm. Really good. I definitely love it. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah, Whip. you guys definitely need to try this recipe. Um, it's really good, especially all homemade ingredients. Super good. And this is going to be filling. Damien, you want a bite? No? Okay. Well, it's a win for me. 